when I'm talking to my older clients, I'm like, look, I'm not asking you to put all your money into Bitcoin. I'm just saying that having zero Bitcoin is insane because it's got more asymmetry than anything else in the you know in the world right now by by a large measure. You know, there's I've never seen anything this good. Um, even at this price, you kind of just have to get comfortable with the fact that, you know, what Sailor said is correct. It is going up forever, Laura. And so, you know, I mean, if you bought it at 60 and it goes to 600 and then it goes to 6 million, both of which I think will occur now over multiple, multiple years, um, you know, you're going to be really glad you bought it at 60. So, um, you know, but you've got to have patience. Spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds in Hong Kong have exceeded 2 billion Hong Kong dollars equivalent to approximately $256 million in assets under management, marking a significant milestone. Despite this achievement, U.S. counterparts have attracted significantly more capital and investors. Over the past week, the three spot Bitcoin ETFs in Hong Kong saw a net inflow of 247 Bitcoin, bringing their total holdings to over 4,450 Bitcoin. Amid these developments in the ETF market, renowned Bitcoin enthusiast Lawrence Leppard recently shared his investment advice in an interview. Leopard highlighted that while older investors might need to be more cautious, younger investors may be more comfortable with Bitcoin's volatility. He also expressed his belief that Bitcoin has greater long-term growth and investment potential than gold and called for an end to government irresponsibility. According to Leopard, risk tolerance in Bitcoin investing is closely linked to age. Older investors might exercise more caution due to shorter time horizons, while younger investors, with a longer runway, can better withstand market fluctuations. However, Leopard emphasized that older investors should still consider diversifying their portfolios with some Bitcoin, albeit with caution. Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself first ahead of the crowd. We have created the ultimate step-by-step -step crypto cheat guide that will guide you this bull run. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Now by clicking on the link below to get your exclusive copy just under $10. If you're 30 and you can, you know, you know that you've got a long runway in front of you and a lot of earning power and so forth, if this thing goes up and down a bit, who cares, right? But if you're 60 or 70 and you put all your money into something and it has a, you know, 60% drawdown, well, that's, that's kind of bad. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and so, I mean, I think, I think older people are right to be somewhat cautious, but that doesn't mean they hold zero. And obviously I'm glad you talked your father into it because, you know, it's, it's, it is the best performing financial asset. It's going to, in my opinion, it's going to continue to be the best performing financial asset. And so, you know, it's if you can under, if you can live through the roller coaster, which as we all know, kind of never lasts more than four years, um, then then you're fine. But if you know if you're on your deathbed and you, you might need the money, you know, your your hairs might need the money in a year or two. Well, you probably shouldn't have all your money in Bitcoin. You know, <laughs> that's it. You, you got to take. You got to have a. You know, so it's yeah. It's just a matter. Of, I mean, it's it's not it's not a, it's not a zero or a one. I mean, I, when I'm talking to the, my older clients, I'm like, look. I'm not asking you to put all your money into Bitcoin. I'm just saying that having zero Bitcoin is insane because it's got more asymmetry than anything else in the, you know, in the world right now by, by a large measure. You know, there's, I've never seen anything this good, um, even at this price. And that's the funny thing I, I encounter, and I've, I've almost built a ton of gold people, but I encounter a lot of people looking at it and they're making the mistake of fixing on older prices. Well, geez, yeah, I get it for you. You bought it at 5,000 and you know, it's at 60,000. Now, how can I pay that much? And I'm like, yeah, but you don't understand. When I was buying it at five thousand, I was looking at Max Kaiser, who bought it at two. You know, <laughs> and and you just you kind of just have to get comfortable with the fact that, you know, what Sailor said is correct. It is going up forever, Laura. And so, you know, I mean, if you bought it at sixty and it goes to six hundred and then it goes to six million, both of which I think will occur now over multi multi years, um, you know, you're going to be really glad you bought it at sixty. So, um, you know, but you've got to have patience, right? And we all Absolutely. know that those. Those of us who are in it, know it, have studied, etc., say that the only the only Bitcoiners that the, the only thing I think is a warning to people, um, and the only time I've seen people get hurt in this, and I think it's more it's incumbent upon all the Bitcoin cheerleaders, and I'm one of them, you're one of them, we all are, we believe in it, um, is to is to fully explain to a buyer what they're buying and what it can do, because the only time I've ever seen anybody get hurt at it is when they they got all excited about it, they FOMO'd into it right at a peak or near a peak. Then it had a big drop. They concluded they were wrong and they blew it out at the bottom, you know, and, and that's, you know, I mean, they, they did part of it right. They bought some, but they didn't do the other part right. They didn't they didn't dollar cost average down. Uh, they instead let the price convince them that they were in somehow some way wrong and, and they sold, you know, whereas if they just hung on, as, as we all know, everybody who's been in it for four years is ahead.
you know, of their cost basis. And I think that pattern will continue. But, you know, for an older person who's got risk, you know, aversion, um, you know, it should be it should be an aggressive part of their portfolio that, you know, if it goes down 60 percent, they're not going to it's not going to change their lifestyle or scare them. You know, and so I don't know what that means, but I mean, if you're 70 or 80, maybe it's 10 percent or 20 percent of your portfolio. You know, I, I mean, that's just a, a guess. I mean, I think everybody's different. I know 70 year olds who have all their money in it, but they fully understand it and they believe in it longer term. So, you know, it, it's just a it's a matter of understanding what you're buying. Um, but, I, you know, having been an investment professional for 40 plus years, the first two things you should look at with respect to an investment are what's the pattern? What has it done in the past? Because it's probably going to do that in the future to some degree. And then, you know, what's the performance? And, you know, the pattern in the past is it's been volatile with some big drawdowns. So, you know, if you're buying it and, you, and the money you're using to buy it, you think to yourself, oh, if it goes down 60%, I'm going to I'm going to want to shoot myself. Well, then then you're buying too much. You know, but if you if you buy it and you say to yourself, I know that in a, in a 10 year time frame, it's going to be up a lot. And if it goes down 50 percent, I don't care. Then that's the right amount to buy. And then if it does go down 50 percent, you know, as, as you've done, I've done, others have done, you, you think to yourself, oh, this is great. It's on sale. You know, and now I'm going to buy more. According to Lawrence Leppard, gold has a strong network effect and serves as a store of value due to its 5,000 year history and global recognition. He noted that in Turkey, younger people tend to buy Bitcoin, while older individuals prefer gold, partly because of gold's relatively lower volatility. Leppard criticized central banks and governments for their reckless actions, which he argued are creating a sovereign debt bubble that will inevitably burst. He predicted that hyperbitcoinization could eventually occur, possibly within the next decade, alongside significant inflation and continued money printing. Despite Bitcoin's higher volatility, Leopard believes it holds greater investment potential than gold and expects dramatic movement in Bitcoin's value within the next three to six months. He advocates for the legalization of Bitcoin, silver, and gold, and supports the establishment of a sound money standard. Let's return to the interview to hear more insights from Lawrence Leopard. You know, 8 billion people on the planet know what gold is. They know it's money, 5,000 years of history. You know, it's just got an enormous network effect in that respect. And yeah, Turkey's had a lot of inflation. And that, I, what I've told, been told by a couple of people I know who live there or been there is that the young people are, are buying Bitcoin, the old people are buying gold. And it makes perfect sense. I mean, it's, you know, the one thing about gold, gold can be volatile too, but, but typically volatility in gold is down 20%, not down, you know, 50, 60, 70%. You know, that volatility generally irons itself out pretty quickly in both of these assets because, you know, they're not being printed. And, and that's really the underlying theme here. And the reason why, you know, these things are going to work so well is, you know, the other side of this coin. I mean, if, 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 if governments and central banks throughout the world were behaving in a responsible fashion, you know, what we're proposing wouldn't be as relevant. But uh, I think anybody who takes the time to read the news and investigate the, you know, the facts can only conclude that governments and, and central banks are operating in a very irresponsible fashion <laughs> and, and probably with growing irresponsibility, which is why, you know, I think ultimately we're going to get to hyper Bitcoinization. But that's, you know, that's not tomorrow. That's years, you know, years away. But we're heading in that direction because you know, these, I mean, it's, it's, it's just math. I mean, you cannot continue to keep a sovereign debt bubble going unless you print more money. It just, it, you know, otherwise it'll collapse on itself. I mean, very deflationary. And kickoff of this fourth turning was 08. I mean, I think that was the big, that was a big wake up call, right? I mean, that's when I really woke up to the fact, oh my God, these guys are out of control. And they're going to print money forever to keep this thing going. Um, you know, 20 years from that would be 2028, you know, 30 years would be 2038. So, I feel like there'll be some resolution to this issue in the next 10 years, pretty pretty certainly, um, probably less. And as the issue comes to get resolved, you know, they're, they're, you know, what'll happen is we'll have enormous inflation, a lot of money printing, they won't be able to stop. And and the, and the way a, a currency fails or quote unquote hyperinflates is when everyone loses confidence in it. And you know, we're we're, we're starting to see that. I mean, you know, th there are two very good clues of that. One is a record high gold price we just achieved in US dollars, it's over $2,500. I'm sure Australian dollars, it's a record as well. And then, you know, the Bitcoin price is not at a record, but it's awfully close. I mean, it was record was in the low 70s. We're pretty close to that in the 60s. So and maybe we're a tad below it. And I've also observed historically that when these things move, gold tends to smell things first and move first because it's more broadly distributed. And I think more geopolitically sensitive to problems coming. And so, you know, my sense, if the pattern holds from the last few times this happened, my sense is that, you know, in the next, you know, three to six months, Bitcoin's going to move. It's going to move really hard and faster than gold. 
right? I think Bitcoin's a superior investment to gold if you can handle the volatility. I'm anti-inflation. I think we should go to a you know sound money standard, and um, you know the choice is being gold and Bitcoin, and um, you know that that they'll get voted in, and and we will move in that direction. I mean, you know, that, the book I'm writing also calls it tells policymakers what they should do. I mean. I think the first thing they should do is they should make gold, silver, and Bitcoin all legal tender so that there's no capital gains tax associated with holding these things, right? Um, they're just, they're money. And so if we have four kinds of money, dollar, gold, silver, Bitcoin, let's say just to pick four examples, and they're all legal tender and they're all, so you can trade with them. You can, you know, do contracts in gold, you can, all, that, all the above. There's no tax on, you know, transactions in them um, and let them compete and see who comes up at the top, you know? Um, on a store of value basis, I'm pretty sure, you know, I know who will win and that's Bitcoin, you know, on a transaction basis, a means of exchange, method of exchange basis. Well, you know, we got a little bit of work to do there. I mean, the lightning network is nice, but it's still pretty, pretty undeveloped and nascent. I mean, when you consider how big the credit card networks are as a comparison. So, um, but it, yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it's a broken system and, um, some of us see it and a lot of people don't see it and, they're being distracted by the political people who are trying to get them to fight amongst themselves rather than recognize that the enemies in Washington, D.C. A crypto analyst, echoing the views of Bitcoin enthusiast Lawrence Leopard, has emphasized the importance of staying invested in Bitcoin despite market volatility, predicting a significant breakout to the upside. Both the analyst and Leopard remain optimistic about Bitcoin's future, advising investors to focus on its long-term potential and be prepared for market fluctuations. In an August 20th post on X, the analyst known as CryptoCunch shared insights on Bitcoin's current state, supported by a detailed price chart. He expressed confidence that the most exciting phase of Bitcoin's market cycle is imminent. This aligns with Leopard's recommendation for investors to maintain a long-term perspective to capitalize on Bitcoin's asymmetric growth potential, rather than reacting to short-term market movements. CryptoCon argues that selling Bitcoin now would be like abandoning the market just before a rebound, a view supported by his analysis of the P-multiple cycle. This metric, which compares Bitcoin's daily issuance value to its yearly average, suggests Bitcoin is at a low point, poised for a major upward rally. By tracking Bitcoin's movements from 2010 to 2026, CryptoCon highlights the importance of recognizing patterns and staying invested, reinforcing Leopard's advice to weather volatility for potentially substantial future returns. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.